frozen to the bone There's darkness in your soul Okay, I have another jam-packed episode for you because I have a lot of ground to cover and I'm going to try to do it very quickly as possible and not get into too many details. But I was leaving off in the last episode, we talked about Ben Riley still being out there and, and where does he go from here? He appeared that Iron Man book real briefly, but where does the character go? Does he find his redemption? What's going on? Uh, and that's what this story is we're going to talk about today. So yeah, we talked about his death before in previous episodes. We've talked about his battles with Venom, uh, you know, in other episodes. And now we're going to talk about him once again becoming Spider-Man. And that happened actually in this book at first with the free comic book day issue from this year where it was uh, Spider-Man fighting, uh, you know, a couple villains and in a new costume. And you're like, wait, who is this? What, what, why is Spider-Man another new costume? And then they reveal at the end that it's actually Ben Riley. And what happens is Peter Parker, after the events of Nick Spencer's run, he gets very ill, he gets sick, he's been infected with something, and he's dying. Or he's in a coma and he's, he's struggling big time. And his powers are on the fritz and there's a lot going on. So the world needs a Spider-Man. And what happens is because Peter Parker, I guess some loophole, when he owned his own company, the assets of that company were later sold when he owned Parker Industries or whatever. And that was bought out by a company called Beyond. They essentially became the owners of the name Spider-Man. And so they said, well, we need Spider-Man. We need a Spider-Man and we're going to be in control of them. And so Ben shows up and says, all right, well, if someone's going to be Spider-Man and Peter's out of commission, I should probably be the one, but I want to get Peter's blessings first. And that's what I really liked. When this book started off in Spider-Man number 75, I actually really liked where it began, where it introduced Ben as the new Spider-Man. And he did the right thing. He actually did those because a lot of times we read these comics and we go, why didn't they just go talk to someone? Why didn't they go talk to the hero and ask, you know, for whatever? And Ben does that. He actually, they didn't follow any of those bad tropes. He goes and talks to Peter and says, hey, while you're at a commission, I'm going to be Spider-Man. Unfortunately, I'm, you know, this is the way it is. They own the copyright or name or something of Spider-Man. But eventually I'll find a way to make that, you know, you could be Spider-Man again or call yourself Spider-Man again. He's like, I I'll figure something out. He goes, but for now, you know, New York needs a Spider-Man and um, I have the powers and they're going to help me do it. So they know he's Ben Riley, but they don't know he's a clone of Spider-Man. Um, and they also know that he had a girlfriend named Janine who went by other names as well. So they offer to take her out of jail and live with Ben in a penthouse owned by the Beyond Corporation. And that's what pretty much this story is, is Ben working for a company, like a, a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar company. And, uh, and he's going around trying to save people while Peter Parker is recovering and, you know, he's on the mend. Um, and then it also is a way for Ben to fight villains that he never fought before in the 90s because, you know, he was only Spider-Man in the 90s for maybe a year or half, or most of a year. And he didn't get a chance to see a lot of classic Spider-Man villains because some of them weren't even around back then. Like Dr. Octopus wasn't around. He was dead at the time when Ben started jumping into the Spider-Man role and there was Lady Octopus. So this is a way for them to tell some stories where it's like, hey, we get Ben interacting with other characters. And I like that. And they even released a Ben Riley miniseries, uh, which is uh, out there and you could read it. It's really cool. It's uh, Ben back in the days when he was Spider-Man. And it's told from that point of view after Aunt May died and he became Spider-Man. And he's building a relationship and friendship with actually Kafka at uh, Ravencroft. And that does set up some stuff that's going to happen, I guess, later on with Ben's story where he's interacting with, you know, Ashley Kafka again, only this current one is a clone and she's evil. Um, so they kind of play off of that a little bit and she's psychoanalyzing him and giving that information to Beyond Corporation and other things. So it's kind of neat how they kind of tied that in and they had that miniseries come out to kind of help go, all right, we know they didn't have a relationship in the past and we said in current continuity they did. So we're going to tell a miniseries where we kind of do a soft retcon and introduce a story where they actually did meet and they were friends, uh, you know, Kafka and, and Ben Riley. So that was kind of neat. So they do that. And then they also bring in Daughters of the Dragon to help Ben out, who also worked for the Beyond Corporation. And it was just a cool way to, like I said, get Ben to meet characters he didn't get to meet before because Craven was dead and and you know some of these other characters weren't around anymore so yeah just an overall fun story um for the most part as far as Ben Riley goes it was just cool to see him doing heroic things again and trying to be a better person and that's kind of the issue with Spider-Man is that there's so many spider people now balancing all these characters it almost feels like man I wish they would have just let 
Kane and Ben stay dead. You know, after uh, Spider-Verse and they killed Kane, they should have never brought Ben back. They should have left Kane dead and that's it. Or put Kane on another universe or another world because with Miles and Spider-Gwen and all these other characters, like it's just getting so redundant and so, so much so that you can't even find books to put these characters in. Like I would have loved Kane to be a regular in Donny Cates' Venom book because I know Ryan Stegman likes to draw him. So it's like, man, find a place for them in other books. Like when Scarlet Spider showed up in Iron Man, I was like, this is good, this is good. But then this story came along and it pulled him right out of the pages of Spider-Man. I was like, uh, or Iron Man. So I'm like, ah, all right, like we, consistent, like figure out a home for them and put them there. I would love to see them in non, you know, Spider-Man books even. So like put, have Kane be a regular in a Hulk book or something, like whatever. Just, I would like to see those characters exist somewhere. Um, even, but you know, I, I don't know. That's just my fanboyness, I guess, for sure. But obviously I want them to be put into the proper story as well too. So uh, hopefully a good story for Kane comes along at some point. But there's a lot of issues of this Spider-Man Beyond story. It went from issue 75 up to uh, basically issue 100. And there was some cool tie-ins and one-shots like this one where Ben gets to work with Doctor Strange um, and, and Black Hat and, and everything. So really cool. But what ends up happening at the end of that book is that Ben sacrifices himself. He uses, you know, that's what he does. You know, he tries to save Peter and he jumps into this machine that the Beyond Corporation made and it ends up taking away all of his memories. So as someone who has been in a situation where I woke up with no memories. Um, I connected with Ben on this level. I was like, hey, okay, I'm on Ben's side. He made the ultimate sacrifice and he gave up his actual memories, the life he had, all the good he's done. He gave it up, you know, his, his memories with uh, Janine and everything, all given up. Um, and what happens from that is actually he becomes jaded. He becomes uh, really mean spirited and that I don't understand because I feel like even in a, as a, someone with, you know, who's experienced it on some level, having no memories, like if you deep down, you know, we all make mistakes, but if deep down you were a good person, you find your way to that pretty naturally, I feel. And that's what's weird about this story is that like it's he just turns full 180 and becomes kind of a villain. And I really didn't like that. And we didn't see him again until the year after his free comic book day where they have this like crazy uh, mailbox trying to kill Spider-Man. And this mailbox does come back later, by the way, uh, at the end of Dark Web. Um, but this mailbox tries to kill Spider-Man and then it fails and Spider-Man beats it up, gets away. And then that's when you see Ben Riley in the new costume that he got at the end of Beyond where he became Chasm. And he is now teaming up with Madeline Pryor, who is also a clone of Jean Grey from the X-Men. And her history has been totally revamped in a lot of ways because they've changed the X-Men universe completely after Jonathan Hickman took over. So, but they're still holding on to some of those old stories where, where Jean and Madeline were there and Cable was her son and all that stuff. So that leads us actually into this one shot of Amazing Spider-Man that is a precursor to Dark Web, the last prequel issue to Dark Web that we haven't discussed yet. And in this issue, we have Ben Riley now searching for his memories you know he wants to find a way to get his memories back and he does meet up with janine and janine's like look you know i found you after your memories were wiped out and you started to change and now you have these new abilities um but you know i want to help you and she's like but i want to reintegrate into the world too i've been in jail and then after jail the beyond corporation locked me away in a penthouse where i had to basically wait for you every night um and i didn't like that i don't want to live like this and i don't want to see the man i love fall apart she's like so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you now you know ben riley like you have a choice continue to pursue this or try to get back into the world with me and we go create new memories together and maybe we go talk to spider-man and this is where i hate the story now because in the original beyond story they actually had you know ben go talk to spider-man and uh, and now he's like no spider-man took my memories so i want to take his he's storing his my memories in his head now and I want them. And there's no reason why Ben thinks this. It's just because the writers of Beyond wanted him to think that at the end of the story. But there's no evidence to make Ben feel like that actually happened. And that's what's really frustrating. I'm sure there's security cameras in that building that Spider-Man could show Ben and Ben just turn, you know, Ben would just calm down afterwards. But nobody does that. So this is a pure, this story is purely on the cliches that I hate where one character just doesn't talk to the other. And that's why everyone hates each other. So uh, Janine, though, goes out into the world and tries to have lunch and ends up being mistreated 
by a cook who like is flirting with her and being mean and then turns out he might be a secret agent or something and telling her she's an awful person and so because of this one bad interaction she has when she tries to go to lunch she goes back to ben and says you know what you're right the world sucks no one's ever going to accept people like you and me so we might as well do this together you know and so ben is now getting into the dark arts he's starting to look into other uh, sources to get his memories back including looking at the dark hold and uh, getting like the skin of a, a creature that he finds or a monster that he finds, which I think turns out to be Madeline Pryor, because as they create this device to activate it using the skin that he read the spell from the dark hold, he it ends up opening a portal to limbo and going right to Madeline Pryor. And so this is the book of how they met because in that free comic day issue, we were like, how did he meet Madeline Pryor? You know, and this is how he, he met her. So he shows up in limbo and the two of them talk it out and come up with a plan to restore his memories. And she finds a way to do so um, by, you know, casting a spell that rips the soul out of somebody and you can eat it. It puts it into like a forbidden fruit, like an Adam and Eve type thing. And you're going to eat it. And once you eat it, you gain all knowledge that, that person had. So Madeline's like, this is how we're going to restore your memories, Ben. And in the meantime, she's like, Janine, she's your girlfriend, but she could be a liability so we're going to need to do something about her. So now that you're down in limbo, I can give you powers. And Janine has constantly had secret identities, like she's or alternate identities, where she's been known as other names as she's tried to run from the cops over the years after she killed her abusive father. Um, and so, or yeah, or ex-lover or whatever it was. And so now she gets turned into Hollow's Eve, who is someone who literally wears the masks of monsters to change her power set so frankenstein werewolf all that stuff pretty dumb <laughs> in my opinion but whatever we got hollow's eve uh, our first appearance of hollow's eve and then the last story here where ben finds somebody who's been tailing peter parker and is like a secret agent uh, and then also tailing ben and ben knocks him out and brings him to limbo where they drain his soul find out he's a very bad guy and madeline is able to eat it and ingest his memories and says this is the way we're gonna help you, Ben. We're going to lead an army to Earth, and I'm going to get something I want and overrun New York with demons and fight the X-Men and beat them, and you're going to get with you what you want. We're going to feed you the forbidden fruit of Peter Parker's soul. So we just need to get him down here in limbo and have him eat from the tree so that way we can take his memories and give them to you. So that's the plan, and that's going to lead us right into Dark Web, which will be a future episode. I'm probably going to squeeze a couple other things in here because I think there's other news and information that's coming out. Um, and then also I want to review Red Goblin number one before, while it's still kind of new uh, within the first like two weeks of it being out. So I'll talk about that probably coming up next, and then we'll dive back into Dark Web. And I'll try to speed through it because I am going to do a discussion video with somebody about our overall thoughts so you can hear someone else's thoughts about Dark Web and not just mine. And we're going to do a collaboration probably in like middle March, middle to late March. Um, so I'll try to get all the dark web stuff of my point of view up before then. So let me know what you think of this. Now that we've completely led all the way up, you have the whole history of Ben Riley. you know, you know, small versions of it. I didn't go into super detail in the last two videos or in the previous two where I did like the histories, but I'll put all those in a playlist. And if you ever want to watch all four of them in order, you can check them out so you can be caught up on dark web um, and if you're waiting for the trade paperbacks and stuff. But if you want, read the single issues and you're dying to give your opinions, we will get into that very, very soon, I promise you. So thanks for watching the show. And again, leave your comments down below of Ben's journey overall. Do you have any favorite moments of Ben Riley or Kane? Um, any, you know, do you like Hallow's Eve? Whatever it is, you know, are you a Madeline Pryor fan? Let me know in the comments and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in the next episode. Peace.